Televinia of Titas of Pageantry. I am at the KF headquarters and I am graced by the beautiful representative from Baguio, Dean Diane Balogal. Good evening, Dean! Good evening, Paul! Hello, viewers of Televinia. Hello, everybody. Hello, Tita. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for inviting me. Um, like what I said earlier, it would have been easy for me to arrange a virtual meeting with you, but you came from Baguio early this morning. You arrived. You're here in Manila for your training for Hias Sam Pilipinas. Ilang oras lang ang pagitan. Anong tinitira mo, Dean? Well, of course, I'm aiming for the crown, so I'm working hard for it. So walang budol to, walang Red Bull, walang cocktail, walang moonshine, walang anything. Just dedication and pure hard work. Awarding ceremony! <laughs> Dean, this is my first time to meet you. Um, please, walk us through. Paano ka ba namin na-figure out sa Tita of Pageantry? Sino bang unang nakausap mo doon? Um, I think Tita B discovered me first. No? Um, I think napapalo na ni Tita B, yung handler coach, Kuya Miko. Tapos she saw me si Dora Sapinia. And then she messaged me asking me my plans for pageantry. And then doon na nag-start yung relationship ko with Tita of Pageantry. Ever since talaga, like, Nagsistart pa lang ako, like hindi pa akin po <laughs> Very interesting, you know, because you would think that out of um, the two of us, ako pa yung medyo mas porsigido to get to know the girls, ako pa yung medyo mas aggressive. Para lahat kayo actually, the new discoveries or the new ones na pinopost namin sa titas goes through Tita B, siya yung may keen eyes. O kasi medyo nahihiya na parang ano ba to, go-go ba to o hindi. So, one of my earliest recollections with you is that you're pretty close to Roxy Benz. Yeah, she's actually my soul best friend. Ayan pala, so bestie pala kayo. Because I'm yeah. looking at you, I'm looking at her. I mean, now I, I'm looking at the difference. Hindi naman kayo sobrang parehong pareho. Of course, the height and the vibe is different. But there's something similar about you two. So it's the best friend thing. Yeah, it's the best friend thing. And we like the same things. We actually have a very common taste, especially in music. We love Taylor Swift. Okay. And we like having wine nights. <laughs> Ay, saman niyo naman ako siya. <laughs> yes, Tita. Sure, soon. <laughs> Ay, papap- makapasabak pala tayo sa wine. <laughs> Alright, so um, can you walk us through how you got into pageantry muna? Was it pageantry or modeling? Like, how did you get into our world? Although it's not easy to get into pageantry, but, you know, when you have looks like this, how did you get here? Well, ever since I was young, I really wanted to try um, pageantry already. Like, when I was a child, as far as I can remember, as long as I can remember, um, when I'm watching um, in the television and when I was watching um, beauty pageants, um, I try to imitate the, the things that they do. Like, for example, I try to use a blanket and cover up my body and, and uh, pretend like it's a gown. So I actually joined my first pageant when I was in Negros pa. Because I, I was born and raised in Negros. Ay! Award! Yeah. Talaga! Saan doon? Um, Manapla. Negros Occidental. Ay! Yeah. Pagkasagay yung beauty ko! Yeah, so, ay, totoo. Oo, <laughs> oh, oh, totoo. Okay, so, na. <laughs> so I'm in Ilonga, actually. Ah, um, okay. I just migrated to Baguio when I went into college na. So uh, my first town pageant was in Negros. But then I stopped joining Casabita. Like, for a while. Until I graduated na in college. Because I wanted to focus sana on my academics. And then after college na, I met my handlers and they told me that they, they saw a potential in me and I said why not maybe it's time to go back and I know that I'm back for good na tita because I really love the pageantry and I'm really doing my best to focus on, on this side of my career yes Bonita. it's nice to hear that you're liking where you are because I, I think I mentioned this before in my other interviews sometimes it makes me nervous as an interviewer or as part of uh, someone in the community when we talk to these new girls we try to be like super slow with them because i know how overwhelming it is to be in philippine pageantry not just pageantry guys philippine pageantry it's very competitive and sometimes a lot of these girls they get burned out um hindi sila maka-cope lalo na sa social media hindi sila maka-follow and sometimes sayang yung potential nila kasi sila na mismo yung nagigive up so we're trying to be a little easier on them <laughs> nakakatuwa ang dami niyo palang gustong gusto sometimes kasi nakakahiya mag-impose especially when someone is tall and in you know honestly in most cases lalo na kung happy ang unang isipin magpageant ka kasi mat- ka. And some of these girls, they get really annoyed kasi syempre parang yun na lang ba yung pwede sa akin magpapageant ako. That's why it's so refreshing to have someone like you na parang gusto mo to, hindi ka pinilit dito. 
why? Um, what was the realization? Because you stopped, ka eh. Yes, po. Um, my mom actually was the main reason why I, I am joining pageantry again because it was really her dream. Okay. Because she had me when she was very young. She didn't have the opportunity to like be a beauty queen, be a model, and then you know it's like achieving her dreams for herself through me. So I'm doing this for her and also for myself because I really like the platform that pageantry gives me. It, being um, a nurse by profession and having the heart to community service, I'm really that's an issue that's really close to my heart. Because you know, when I've been in the community during my um, nursing school and the university, I've seen how many people suffer because they don't have the information that they need to make informed decisions, lead meaningful lives, and be an important um, to have a meaningful role in our society. So that's why I have seen the impact that the pageantry world could really give me and offer me. So I will use this platform really to widen and reach out to a much wider audience and you know do what I do, but this time with a bigger platform. Great. Let me circle back to that because I think we really have to talk about the purpose of pageantry, why you girls are doing this. I mean, if you're aware with what's happening in the news, we have issues like what's happening in Ukraine with Russia and things like that, which means that talking about pageantry doesn't even seem appropriate these days. But, of course, we are in the Philippine setting, life goes on. Um, so I'm going to circle back to that purpose. So I want to talk about um, the technicalities of pageantry first. So you're definitely very striking. How tall are you? I'm 5'8". You're 5'8". And I think I asked this of you before, but of course our pageant fans don't know a lot about you. Could you kindly tell us a little bit about your background? You're obviously very mestiza. Tell us about your ethnicity as well, because people want to know. Yeah, so um, my full name is Tindayan Balogal. I am half Filipina and half Australian. Okay. I grew up in Negros Occidental, so I am also fluent in Ilonga or um, Hiligaynon. Hiligaynon. Yeah. Yes. And then, but I um, migrated to Baguio when I went into college now. So I'm currently working there as a nurse now, my profession. Full-time nurse. And so graduate ka na. Yeah, I'm graduating. Award! Nurse na. Ayan. Okay, yeah. so I um, watched some videos on you. I read some articles. Let's talk about you being a nurse. Why did you go into nursing? Is it because it's on trend, especially with Filipinos? Or did you always have the affinity to you know, take care of people because I'm not like that. I never saw myself as someone like that. With animals, yes, but with people, probably not. How did you get into this? Well, Tita, um, you know, before, what I really wanted when I was young was to become a blind stewardess. Okay. Yeah, but then, you know, struggling growing up, I really, uh, I grew into poverty because that was, I saw how my grandmother suffered. Like, na paghihandan kami, if you remember, super life niya lang. Oh. And we were homeless for a while, like at, at least for six months. Oh my gosh. And then I've really seen how my grandparents struggled. You know, they have headaches, but they can't go to the hospital because we didn't have enough resources to go. And so I, I grown into that environment and my, set, my mind was set to become, my mind was set now when I grew up na and when I went to, when I go into college, I will choose a profession that will help me take care of my family. So basically, I went into nursing so that I could take care of my family. Na para, um, they won't be scared anymore na if they are sick, they won't be scared to go to the hospital because I'm there to advise them and to help them and to guide them. Yeah. That's nice. I mean, that's nice that you got into nursing because there definitely is a purpose. I mean, I know that there are a lot of women out there, maybe men and women who take into nursing only because of the monetary return that nursing um, in the provides. No. In the Philippines, <laughs> yun nga. So parang, in the Philippines, it's really a labor of love. Yeah. Um, I, I'm sure it's part of your plan in the long run to maybe expand your nursing horizon. But... You are at a very difficult situation actually because you finished nursing, swak at the time na may pandemic tayo, and then kailangan yung serbisyo mo. How was that? I mean, gano kahirap, gano kadali na bigla kang kailangan na sa front lines? Well, you know, Tita, when I passed the board exam last November 2019, uh, mula pa at ang COVID yun. Wala December pa, pa ang December, COVID. Oh. So I was really looking forward to that normal kind of setup in a hospital. Mm-hmm. So actually, my first job was um, an institution nurse, a hotel nurse for ah, okay. two months. Okay. And then after that, I went to Quezon City actually in Capital Met. I worked there in an emergency room and we catered to COVID patients na. Um, we were there in the front line when the first COVID uh, positive patient um, came in the Philippines. Oh my gosh. The first um, community 
um, infection. Na. Okay. So it was really kind of different talaga for me because we were we weren't trained to wear the PPEs talaga and to work in a in a setup that is very um, like thrilling. Because thrilling talaga siya. We can't do suctioning, especially in the ER. Because it's ba bawal siya like the nebulization. But then um, I struggled. When I was working, because I got COVID, because one of the first few frontliners oh got COVID during that time, and I to think na wala pa kong one year na. Oh my gosh, yolo, yolo for you. Yeah, tita. So you know, I had a lot of realization during mm-hmm. that time. Na talagang when you are a nurse, parang hindi lang siya yun nga tita sabi mo. It's not the monetary that keeps you going. You know, it's not the salary even. It's it's your heart to help the people, especially when you see people suffering. Because very strict pa sila noon, and like they can't be with their watchers, family, significant others. So the only people that can be with the patients are the nurses and doctors. And most of the time, nurses that are twenty four seven. So we are there for our patients. So it's really a labor of love, and um, we were there to provide hope and care for them as much as we can. You know, Dean, whether pageantry works for you or not, the wealth of experience that you gained from working the front lines at around the time COVID really sparked in the country, you're standing tall, you're here with us, you seem to be really healthy, so let's keep that. Um, do you have a message of hope? Because I think you're the best person to talk to when we ask people about hope because you're there, you you witnessed everything from taking in the first few known COVID positive patients to just being there with them because I remember how isolating it was. Um, Now I think we have a better understanding on how to deal with COVID with the distance and the precautions but you know the first few weeks and the first few months that was really difficult. Do you have a message of hope? Well, Vita, it's really nice no, that um, slowly we're getting back to normal, especially in Baguio City, where we're slowly um, going back to normal. I'm seeing you, Baguio, very yeah. soon. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, my message would be um, just inform the people they, for the importance of vaccination, siguro, kasi um, the end of the pandemic lies within the hands of those um, herd immunity so that we could develop herd immunity. So there are people who can't have access to vaccination maybe because they have comorbidities, they are sick, so they're not allowed to have the vaccine. So it is up to us, it is up to the people who can get vaccinated to protect those who can't protect themselves. So let us protect each other hand in hand. Um, let us keep the faith and get vaccinated so that um, we can get back to normal now. I think it's time now. It's been three, almost three years now, but two to three years. I think it's time now to um, have the heart to go back to the old normal. <laughs> Oo naman, three years na. Kung hindi ka pa nakapagpabaksin, nakakaloka ka naman, yes. diba? <laughs> diba? Um, Dean, I'm going into something a little more sensitive because you came into our consciousness um, at around the time that you were supposed to join a different pageant. Yes. Now, I've been curious actually because I haven't spoken to anyone who joined that pageant and then did not because I, I was able to talk to Phoebe Godinez and she's your co-candidate in HIAS but she did not sign up for Magandang Pilipinas so just to give our viewers context you were supposed to be part of the inaugural batch for Magandang Pilipinas I want to know how you got tapped into joining that pageant in the first place well, it was supposed to be my first comeback pageant, like the first ever. Um, we uh, we know because Miss Eva Patalipo, yes, and then, you know we got to know the pageant through her through the social media accounts of you know Miss Eva, and then me and my team we talked into like what's the um, best pageant comeback that I could have. So that's also a pioneer pageant. So we thought maybe it, it's meant to be na para first pageant and then first pageant ko rin to come back and so we thought about joining the Magandang Pilipinas but then you know unfortunately you know things happened uh, very controversial and so yeah it didn't push through so I'm not gonna go into the details on why did that did not push through. I mean, for obvious reasons, when something does not push through and when something is shoved under the rug, it means na hindi talaga maganda yun nangyari doon. Um, I'm just curious. I, I wanna know from your side, kasi syempre, you're tall, you're very striking, hindi ka naman normal, katulad namin na palakad-lakad lang. I mean, how do you discern? Kasi syempre, maraming mga ngalabit sa'yo. Maraming gusto siguro na sumali ka doon. Maraming um, magbibigay sa'yo ng opportunity. But after what happened to Magandang Pilipinas, like how careful are you now or how discerning are you? Um, 
because they're everywhere. They're gonna swarm at you. Yes, po. so ano po no? Um, we see to it na when, when there is a pageant available, um, we are ano doing background checking na kasi before we didn't talaga. Oh, like, sure. So hindi ka pa rin background check. It's a pioneer pa- pa- pageant pa naman, so wala pang information na na pwede yung background check. So right now, if we're joining a pageant, we need to background checking and you know we we talk it out with our team if we we if if we want to join this a certain a certain pageant. How did Eva Patalinhog or how did the people from uh, Hiestam Pilipinas convince you to give it another try this time? Because you were one of the first candidates who uh, backed away from Magandang Pilipinas and then you were the one of the first ones to sign up. So tipo kami, wow, sure na sure to. Because of course, Eva is a friend of ours as well. We know her. But um, from the pageant admin side, kailangan mag-ingat din kami na hindi din namin i-overfluff. Because right around that time, we had another uh, Filipina candidate who was supposed to compete. She was already there. She was already in Mexico. And then, pagdating niya doon, wala rin yung pageant. So, medyo sunod-sunod yung time na yun. Um, paano kanila na-convince Anyari doon? Well, actually, Tita, parang hindi talaga dapat din ako mag-join. Ah, okay. So, medyo yes, na-shock ka na. <laughs> <laughs> kasi nga, parang, I, I wanna give it a rest muna. Kasi I think, parang, I just finished Miss Baguio during that time. And I wanted to focus on myself muna. And to, like, reflect on my Miss Baguio journey. But then, you know, Miss Eva messaged me na if, if I wanted to join also. That was my team would like me to join also. Kasi nga, it's a pioneer pageant. Parang, it's like to reclaim um, the, the position that we have in the past. Tapos, um, it's quite an interesting story pa during the screening kasi I didn't know na virtual screening na pala during that time kasi I think meron sila screening from the Zon Visayas and Tindana but I wasn't able to go there kasi nga I have to eat tapos they have virtual screening but I didn't know that was happening already parang nakita ko lang sa story ng page tapos si Miss Eva tapos I messaged her sabi ko Miss Eva for virtual screening pa today tapos sabi niya yes virtual screening today bakit di ka pa nakabag screen sabi ko ay tita I didn't know ay ay tita ay tita ay tita ay tita ay <laughs> I did I, I did that I didn't know ganyan tapos sabi niya are you prepared for right now but I think it was 7pm na fortunately I just finished my shoot during that time I had the shoot so I like kind of made up na and so I ran back and forth to Kuya Miko my handler and then we set up na for, for the screening I think I was the very last girl to screen for the Yasna Filipinas yeah, very last. I think under seventy first. <laughs> so you know what? I do live sessions on YouTube regularly now because right now it's pageant season. So one of the things na palagi nilang tinatanong sa akin is, ano meron ngayon sa Baguio? I asked you about this earlier. Um, well, now I found out that you're not originally from there, but Baguio also seems to be picking up um, when it comes to the pageantry scene there. They're actually quite as, well, probably not as organized, but they're as aggressive as the ladies from Cebu. What's happening in Baguio? I mean, why are you all cooped up there? <laughs> well, um, we have many people who are very, I uh, know, who likes pageantry. pageantry. In Baguio? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, the organizers of Miss Baguio, they really love um, pageantry then. So, they're kind of helping us, the girls, um, in order for us to, like, present ourselves um, nationally very, very well. You know, Baguio has become a breeding ground for beauty queens because of those people, people behind their backs um, supporting us. You know, our makeup artists, handlers, hairstylists, pageant enthusiasts that keeps us going. I'm looking at um, the people who are helping you guys. Ang successful ninyo kasi andyan ka, andyan din si Roxy, of course. Um, hindi natin kakalimutan si Kylie. Um, and then, of course, right now at Miss Universe Philippines, um, pinag-uusapan natin kanina si Genesis as well. So, itong ginagawa mo ngayon, your training right now um, sa Baguio Cat naka-base up until now with your mom, tama ba? Do you have siblings? I have. Ah, you do? You do have. So, nandun na talaga yung life mo. No, I'm actually alone in the bed. Ah, yeah, my family is still in Negros. Ay, interesting. Yeah. Ay, gusto ko maging katulad mo. Iwanan ko lahat ito. Shots, nadaling ko lahat ng pusa ko. <laughs> Nakakatuwa. So, being independent, being in Baguio, and then a frontliner, yeah. kamusta yung feeling ng parents mo, ng mama mo? Uh, may worry ba o talagang solid? Solid yung tiwala nila sa'yo na kaya mo to? Well, Tita, I really, I didn't really have an easy life growing up. Okay. I had many struggles in life. Um, but you know, I appreciate the trust that my mother, especially because I don't have a father now, he passed away already. Um, the trust that my mother gave me, because um, 
being independent, it's not easy. That's why I actually have my tita also in Baguio just recently, but she has to go back now. Because, um, um, like, balancing my time with pageantry and with my career in nursing is quite difficult. But if you have the heart and the dedication to do things, you don't just wait for the destiny to make the magic happen for you. You have to make it yourself. So I'm making my destiny. So that's why they nila like I have 48 hours in my one day because they, they don't know how I do things. Like I have, I, I can do a lot of things in a day because that, that's the person that I am. Especially with the struggles that I, I've had in the past. It made me stronger, made me more independent, braver in taking risks and you know being courageous in making a decision. That's why I'm taking a leap into pageantry and hoping that it will end well for me. Well, that's your woman. She's independent. She's in Baguio. She's from a different <laughs> province. But she's a working girl there. She's pursuing pageantry and stretching her 24 hours to 48. <laughs> this is amazing, Dean. Dean, um, I want to talk a little bit about your causes. Because I read somewhere that you know, you went to school, you did well with declamation, which I think is going to help you a lot in pageantry. Um, I'm looking at you now. Kaya mo naman sabayan yung energy ko. Minsan, ganun ang batayan natin. Kaya niyo bang sabayan ng energy ko? Kaya naman. But um, do you have causes or advocacies that you're working on right now or that you wish to further, you know, work more on and develop? Actually, before Tita, no, um, my main advocacy was health, education, health information through making contents in social media so that I can reach out to people who don't have access to health education. But then when I went into pageantry, I, I saw how this platform could help me further the cause that I have. That's why I created Magandang Kalusugan Charity. Okay. And that charity, we can organize medical missions to go to the community, part lung areas, and conduct medical missions there. Free checkups, free HIV screenings, and also free circumcision. Actually, last year, we held one in Baguio. It's supposed to be this January, but because of Omicron, it got postponed. But then, um, this March, actually, I collaborated also with Baguio and these suppliers and the Air Mayor. They're gonna have um, a medical mission also um, with the help of Magandang Kanusukan Charity. So, what I'm doing is collaborating with public and private organizations to conduct several charitable activities that will really help the people. Because that's very close. Um, that's something that's very close to my heart. So that, that's that's the cause that I want to further, given the chance to be one of the Yes the Feminist ambassador. I think it's also a parallel because to their advocacy, which is community service and leadership, helping the community, especially during the time of crisis, especially during the time of um, Typhoon Ode. Yes. We've had several fundraising activities to help the people. So I would really like to work with the organization to, for our causes to be collaborated with and also for the for the people to be helped. Well, Diane... Dean or whatever persona you have I'm listening to you I think you're in a good headspace I mean you pretty much have an understanding of what you're getting into so lastly I just want to ask you a few questions about your interests or you know what you do for fun I spoke with um, Phoebe the last time we talked about guinea pigs what are you up to um, what are your interests interests well Tita like you I like cats <laughs> Cats and dogs, actually. So I, ha I have a cat right now. His name is Sushi. Hi, Sushi. Hi, Sushi. Um, but you know, my interest is uh, my interest is in pageantry. I also like reading, mm -hmm. of course, declamation. But also, I like learning a lot of things. I'm um, a jack of all things because like, when I like something, I try to do it. I'm going to play the ukulele right now. Okay, yeah. all right. I read that. I read that. That's really cute. All right, so um, being a pageant girl, I'm looking at the training area. Everybody is training, so a lot of you are really doing the work and the prep work. Dean, what's the most difficult thing about pageantry right now? The most difficult thing for me in pageantry right now is my, my time. My, my time in managing all of this. But you know, Makalo, I think I... Hindi mo nga naman siya ma-stretch, uh, di ba? <laughs> I mastered na siguro. Kasi, uh, my, my handlers know this na parang... I, I try to really give it my all if I have the time. And also, they are giving me um, the chance then and the opportunity to really focus then on my work when I'm at work. Like, they don't bother me when I'm at work. Okay, okay, so that's I important. But when I have an off duty na, it's time for me to do my duties as a beauty queen. I try to do it and give it my all. Kamusta mga pasyente, be? Kapag nandun ka, nakikita ka na parang, ano ba to? Nandun na ba ako sa other side? Wala pang ganon? Kaya nandita mga ibang pasyente, sinasabi nila na okay lang na ma-admit kami ng matagal basta ikaw ang nurse na. O, diba? Pero kung ako yan, parang, Lord, eto na ba siya? Yun. So, ano, they like having me as target nurse din. So, 
okay lang with the hospital and the clinic. Okay lang kung nahahati yung oras mo, paminsan yes, mo. Yes, so actually, we have a good schedule at our hospital. Parang 7 days duty to 7 days home. Ay, award! We're transition na ngayon sa April. Kaya I don't know pa what I'm gonna do with my schedule. Kasi we'll transition na to the um, no, new normal na schedule. Hmm. Parang nangina siya yung 7 days home. Okay. And um, I'm also um, checking the social media accounts of PS ng Pilipinas. Parang you girls are having fun, you're well taken care of. Parang anong na-feel mo ngayon? Kasi syempre, naudlot yung unang pageant na dapat mong sasalihan. And meron to bang konting fear na parang hindi ito yung in-expect mo? Or tumaas ba yung expectation mo na you have your free pageant activities with Kias? Um... Ano, tita? Sobrang in-exceed na in yung expectation. Alaga. With yes, so alaga kayo, no? Sobrang alaga uh, talaga sa Cebu. Uh, I like Cebu. It was my first time. Ako rin, Cebu. First time ko nag-Cebu noong December. Eh, di ba, negros lang ako gumakit. Tapos magkalapit ako. Ay, talaga ba? Shocks nung summer ako. Palagi ako nag-ferry doon kasi may lola ako sa Cebu. Sana all, di ba? Di ba? So, okay. Okay yung... Sobrang alaga ko tinita. And the girls are all amazing. Like, amazing girls talaga. Very quality. Wala tayo ikakansel. Pwede siya si kakansel. Walang ganon. So, nagmamahala naman. Very. Alright. Well, of course, we want to respect Kias ng Pilipinas. It is a national pageant. It's just that palagi ko nga sinasabi, hindi ko rin masyadong ma-fluff si Kias ng Pilipinas kasi inaugural edition. So, we have to really see how this goes. By the way, guys, nasa 30 minutes na tayo. Mag-wrap up na ako. I'm so sorry. It's just that, ngayon ko lang nasabi yung disclaimer na umuulan. Ramdam niyo yung ulan. Tapos may nagpa-practice pa. So, talagang may Sana narinig, ano? background time. Ayaan mo. I-technical ko tumakay. So, going back to Hias ng Pilipinas. Um, so, yeah, it's a national pageant. Yes. But, of course, these fans, ang kinoconsider na mga national pageant ay Binibini, Miss Philippines Earth, Miss Universe Philippines, Mutya. Ano nyari? Kailan ka babalik? Or gano'n ka pupunta? Kailan ka magko-crossover doon? Or... Anong plano? <laughs> well, yun ang kita right now, I'm really focused sa Yes na Pilipinas. Yes. I really like the advocacy of the pageant, uh -uh. the causes of the pageant. So, I wanna give it my all. I wanna give it my all to Yes na Pilipinas at the moment. So, magkantay lang tayo. Yes. Again, I ilan taon? 23. Oh, 20, yeah. 23 naman pala. <laughs> Medyo ninenervious kasi kami because, you know, Dean, um, there have been you know, ladies that we, you know, we would wait for for years and then siguro medyo nasusokot silang mag-national so talagang nagsistay sila sa provincia lang hanggang sa tipong kami, girl, paso na oras mo! <laughs> Kasi you can't be cocky even if you're like a fan favorite even if you're like the favorite of everyone in pageantry na nag aaway, -aaway. Age talaga is um, a big factor as well. So, Dean, I'm not gonna hold you up. Um, please, let us know how can we support you, what can we expect, ano pa ba yung mga aabangan namin sa'yo? Well, you can expect a lot of pasabos. Ayan, yan ang mga gusto namin. From the organization um, itself, kasi the organization is really working hard to give a good show. Of course, production ng Cebu yan, diba? What do you expect from Cebu? Tsaka wisik-wisik, wisik-wisik sa tubig ng Cebu. Diba? Oh, Tapos, um, you can actually follow um, the pages of Mias ng Pilipinas. We have Mias ng Pilipinas official at Facebook and also on Instagram. We also have the YouTube account, Mias ng Pilipinas official. You can watch our A Day in the Life videos to get to know the girls more in a much deeper level. And also, you can watch our tourism videos that will showcase and highlight the beauty of our different provinces and cities. And also, you can follow me on my social media handles. I have a Facebook page, Hindi and Balogal, my personal Facebook page, Hindi and Balogal Bukas, and also my Instagram at DMD. So you can follow me and to get updated sa mga updates for my pageant ganaps. I'm actually flying to Cebu now on March 17, so watch out for my arrival look. And of course, the OOTDs that we have prepared for you guys. We have prepared a lot of things. We have a lot in store for you, so watch out for it. So talagang para sa pageant fans to, talagang be ang magbe-benefit dito kami lang talaga. <laughs> Kasi uhaw na uhaw na kami besa glam. Uhaw na uhaw yes, na uhaw. Yes, of course, national pageant ang yes ng Pilipinas. Kaya so, we'll push natin yan. We'll give national pageant level of competition. And um, if I'm not mistaken, there are three titles up yes, for grabs, right? Yes, three titles. Ay, galing, galingan mo. Yes, I will. Hindi naman ako nininervyo sa'yo. Pero galingan mo. <laughs> Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Akalain mo. Kakakala mo, ilang taon na tayong chika-chika. Today yes. lang po kami nagkita. Yes. Maraming maraming salamat. Good luck to you. I'm so happy to get to meet you. Wala po tayong budol ngayon. Yan ang isa sa mga purpose ko kung bakit tayo nagmomotor papunta dito para alamin natin sino may budol, sino hindi. Very promising. Good luck din. Maraming salamat.